Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. How joyful it is when we, the household of the faith, come together in order to celebrate the divine liturgy. Here at the end of the day, having maybe confronted so many difficulties, maybe being tired, wondering do I come to church or do I go home and then maybe have a snack, have a dinner and go to bed. Thank you for those who are joining us here in the church and those via live streaming. In today's gospel, the Lord says, ask and it would be given to you. And we've all asked for many, many times the Lord many things. Yet, it seems to us as if the Lord is occupied by listening to other people or he does not listen to us. How many people stood in front of the Lord's icon? How many people fell on their knees while sitting next to the pews? How many people keep on going through processions at home, raising their hands in the morning, noontime, at night, standing in front of an icon or maybe a statue of the Virgin Mary of our Lord, reading the Holy Scriptures and then at the end turning around and saying, Dear God, please heal my husband. Dear God, I'm going tomorrow to pass an exam or to have an interview. Please make sure they will sign a contract with us. And so many request that we bring them to God and yet sadly we go and apply for this interview and they say sorry we'll call you don't call us we hope and pray that someone dear to our heart who is going surgery will be saved or will be healed yet the doctor comes back and she or he says I'm sorry we've done our best your husband or your wife will never be able to walk again. And deep within there is this kind of screaming that comes out, sometimes loudly, but sometimes we muzzle it, whereby we say, why, Lord, don't you hear us? Don't you see the tears in our eyes? Don't you see the pain? Where the Lord does. The main issue lies in the fact that we sometimes do not realize what we're asking for and the way we ask for. We often pray the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father. And as we pray the Our Father, we come to a place where we say, let it be done according to your will. It is true that I can come in front of the icon of the Lord, I can come in front of his altar, a statue, I can look up to the sky, raise my hands, raise my thoughts, and say, dear Lord, I do hope you can do whatever I'm requesting, and with humility. But we need not to forget that if we trust in our Lord, we need on truly trusting him when we say, let it be done according to your will. If our heart does not beat according to the will of God, it's as if when we sit behind a screen and we're looking for some information and we all know sometimes as we're typing a word 
we miss a letter or add a letter, and suddenly we go to a different website, a website we're not looking for. Sometimes if we're writing our password and we make a small mistake, that's it. We cannot have our screen or our computer opening up to us. And we get frustrated and we keep on doing it and it doesn't work. Why? Simply because we are not putting the right information. When our Lord reminds us that if one of your children wants a fish or whatever, you don't give him a stone, it is true. As long as I know what a fish is all about. How many times people ask us for something and then we bring another thing and they say, why did you bring me that? Sometimes wives go through that kind of struggle or dilemma when their husbands call from work and say, well, I'm coming back home. What do you want? And she might say, well, you know, drop by that place and buy me maybe oranges. And he will come up with apples. And she said, did I ask for apples? I said oranges. Say, well, they are the same. Well, they are not the same. An apple is an apple, and an orange is an orange. But maybe because the man was not truly concentrating, so in his mind, his wife is asking for some fruits. And hence, this is usually where we falter. Our hearts and our minds are not being trained to truly be ready to request what is good for us according to God's will. Most of the time, we request things that we think are good for us from a material point of view, from an earthly point of view. But are they good for us from a spiritual point of view? And in order to be able to reach that stage, we need to train ourselves. This is why we are called to intensify our prayer. This is why we are called to have a domestic church in our home. This is why we are called to read the Holy Scriptures. We need to train ourselves so that slowly but surely we breathe God, we think God, we utter the words of God. We carry the cross despite its pain with joy. We truly become ambassadors to God. No one becomes an ambassador overnight. People have to go through uni and a lot of training till one day the government comes in and say, Mr. Joe, Miss Layla, whatever, now we can send you overseas to represent Australia. Hence, do not feel disappointed if you approach the icon of our Lord or raise your hands or you know you're silent and you're asking God for something. Keep on asking. But meanwhile, keep on training yourself, your soul, your heart, your mind, your body, so that you can request whatever you might think is good, as long as it fits the will of God. Amen.